When is a set a superset? A superset is one that contains all the elements of a smaller set. For example, if B is a subset of A, then A is a superset of B. In other words, A is a superset of set B if every element in B is in A. Like a proper subset, there are also proper supersets, or a superset that is not the entire set. How do functions pertain to sets? A function in sets pertains to a correspondence between two sets called the domain and range. Each member of the domain has exactly one member of the range. It is often called a many-to-one, or sometimes one-to-one, relation. For example, f equals 1, 2, 3, 6, 4, minus 2, 8, 0, 9, 6, is a function, with each set of numbers being an ordered pair. This is because it assigns each member of the set 1, 3, 4, 8, 9 exactly one value in the set 2, 6, minus 2, 0, 6. It never has two ordered pairs with the same x and different y values. In this case, the domain is 1, 3, 4, 8, 9, and the range is 2, 6, minus 2, 0, 6. To show an example that is not a function, f equals 1, 8, 4, 2, 3, 5, 1, 3, 6, 11, is not a function because it does not assign each member of the set exactly one value, it assigns x equals 1 to both y equals 8 and y equals 3 or it has two ordered pairs that have the same x values to two different y values, 1, 8, and 1, 3. For more information about functions, see Algebra. What does E represent in terms of logarithms? No, E is not the code name in a James Bond movie. When talking about logarithms, or logs. In the majority of mathematical circles, it means the base of the natural logarithm. What is an ordered pair? An ordered pair is two quantities usually written as A, B, that have a significant order, thus, A, B, does not equal, B, A. Ordered pairs are used in set theory to define members in a function. Ordered pairs are also valuable in linear equations and graphing in which the x-coordinate is the first number and the y-coordinate is the second number, or, x, y. They are used on a grid to locate a point. For more information about ordered pairs and graphs, see geometry and trigonometry. Are there different types of infinity in mathematics?
To most of us, the universe represents infinity. But in mathematics it is the unbounded quantity that is greater than every real number. Called potential infinity in mathematics, it is the potential for infinity that exists with natural numbers because one can always conceive of a number greater than any given number. Another type of infinity in mathematics is completed infinity. Which refers to the size of an infinite set, such as all the points on a line. At the end of the 19th century, German mathematician George, George, Ferdinand Ludwig Philipp Cantor. 1845 to 1918, showed that different orders of infinity existed and that the infinity of points on a line was of a greater order than that of prime numbers. Where did the symbol for infinity originate? Infinity is represented by the symbol OO. A sign introduced by John Wallace in 1655 in his treatise De Sectionibus Conicus. Historians believe that Wallace, a classical scholar, adopted the sign from the late Roman. Symbol for 1,000. Whether it was from there or another source, the result was and remains, the same, a figure 8 on its side, as many people describe the infinity symbol. What was the progression of logarithm development? The invention of logarithms was a long process, starting with Scottish mathematician John Napier. 1550-1617, also known as Laird of Merchiston, who first came up with the idea of logarithms in 1594. But the actual invention and announcement of logarithms would take another 20 years. In 1614, Napier would publish Miraphysi Logarithmorum Canonis Descripto. Description of the wonderful canon of logarithms, which offered tables and rules for their use. Not long afterward, in 1617, English mathematician Henry Briggs. 1561-1630, published Logarithmorum Cilius Prima, Logarithms of numbers from 1 to 1000. Introducing the concept of common logarithms or logarithms based on the powers of 10. And finally, independently from Briggs and Napier, came Swiss mathematician Just Berge, 1552-1632. Who in 1620 presented Arithmetis Qnd Geometrisk Progress Tabulin. A German work presenting the discovery of logarithms. These discoveries differed in several ways. Napier's approach was algebraic, Berge's was geometric. There were differences from the common and natural logarithms we use today. And neither Napier nor Berge mentioned the concept of a logarithmic base, something that Briggs presented. By 1624 Briggs would write Arithmetica Logarithmica, the arithmetic of logarithms. Extending his common log tables from 1 to 20,000 and from 90,000 to 100,000. But the work on logarithms did not end with Napier. Briggs, or Berge. Natural logarithms eventually evolved out of Napier's original work. 
defining logarithms as exponents was finally recognized by English mathematician John Wallace. 1616 to 1703, who presented them in his 1685 publication, De Algebra Tractatus, Treatise of Algebra. For what other invention was John Napier known? Scottish mathematician John Napier may have been known for his contributions to logarithms. But he was also the inventor of a tool called Napier's bones, also known as Napier's rods. These were multiplication tables inscribed on strips of animal bone or wood. Wilhelm Schickard would eventually build the first calculating machine based on Napier's bones. A device that could add, subtract, and with help multiply or divide. Napier was also the instigator in another discovery, in 1621 English mathematician and clergyman William Oofdred. 1575-1660, used Napier's logarithms as the basis for the slide rule. A ruler-like instrument used long before handheld calculators came into vogue. Oofdred not only invented the standard rectilinear slide rule, but also the circular slide rule which was an extremely useful tool that remained in common usage for more than 300 years. For more about Oofdred, see Math Basics. How else is the term function used? Unfortunately, as with many mathematical terms, there is often more than one function for the word function. For example, contrary to the definition above, function can also mean the relationships that map single points in the domain to multiple points in the range called Multivalued functions which is mainly used in the theory of complex functions. To further confuse matters, there are also functions called non-multivalued functions. How can the base of logarithms be changed? The base of logarithms can be changed from one that is not 10 or e to an equivalent logarithm with base 10 or e. The following gives the formula for such a transition, in which a, b, and x are real positive numbers, but neither a nor b are equal to 1, and x is greater than 0. Convert log x to the base b by using the formula logs slash logba. What happens when you multiply a matrix by the identity matrix? When you multiply any n by n matrix by the identity matrix, you get that same matrix back again. Therefore, let the letter i represent the n by n identity matrix, and a represent any other n by n matrix. We then have a x i equals a and i x a equals a. This is much like the situation when using the real numbers, x x1 equals x and 1 x x equals x.
What is Sir Mello's axiom of choice? Talk it sounds like something on a Greek restaurant menu. Zermelo's axiom of choice is actually a fundamental axiom in set theory. It states that given any set of mutually exclusive non-empty sets, there is at least one set that contains exactly one element in common with each of the non-empty sets. This was actually one of David Hilbert's problems that needed to be solved by mathematicians of his day. For more about David Hilbert, see earlier in this chapter, and in History of Mathematics. German mathematician Ernst Friedrich Ferdinand Zermelo, 1871-1953, took on the task. And in 1904 he developed what is called the well-ordering theorem. Which says every set can be well-ordered based on the axiom of choice. This brought fame to Zermelo, but it was not accepted by all mathematicians who balked at. The lack of axiomatization of set theory, for more about axiomatic set theory, see above. Although he finally did axiomatize set theory and improve on his theorem. There were still gaps in his logic, especially since he failed to prove the consistency in his axiomatic system. By 1923, German mathematician Adolf Abraham Halevi Frankel, 1891-1965, and Norwegian mathematician Albert Thorolf Skolem. 1887-1963, independently improved Zermelo's axiomatic system, resulting in the system now called Zermelo-Frankel axioms, Skolem's name was not included, although another theorem is named after him. This is now the most commonly used system for axiomatic set theory. What is the origin of the word algebra? The word algebra comes from the title of the book Algebra W. Almuka. Bala by Persian mathematician Muhammad ibn Musa al Khwarizmi, 783 c. 850 also seen as al khwarizmi or al khwarizmi The book is roughly translated as Transposition and Reduction, in which he explains the basics of algebraic methods. For more information about the history of algebra, see History of Mathematics. What is combinatorics? Combinatorics is a branch of mathematics overall, called combinatorial mathematics that studies the enumeration, combination, and permutation of sets and the mathematical relations that involve these properties. Defined as, enumeration sets can be identified by the enumeration of their elements. In other words, determining, or counting, the set of all solutions to a given problem. Combination Combination is how to count the many different ways elements from a given set can be combined. For example, the two combinations of the four set A, B, C. D R A B A C A D B C B D C D. 
Permutation Permutation is the rearrangement of elements of a set into a particular order. Often in a one-to-one -one correspondence. The number of permutations of a particularly sized set with n members is written as the factorial n. For example, a set with four members would have four, in first place to one, in the last place. This would equal 4x 3x 2x 1 equals 4, or 24, permutations of four members. For more information about factorials, see algebra. What are the rules for combining logarithms? There are certain rules for combining logarithms. In the following cases. Let a be a positive number that does not equal zero, n is a real number, and u and v are positive real numbers. Logarithmic rule 1, loga, uv, equals loga, u, plus loga, v. Logarithmic rule 2, loga, u slash v, equals loga, u, loga, v. N logarithmic rule 3, loga, u, equals n loga, u. This can be expressed as follows, in rule 1. Multiplication inside the log is turned into addition outside the log, and vice versa, in rule 2. Division inside the log is turned into subtraction outside the log, and vice versa, and in rule 3. An exponent on anything inside the log can be moved to the front of the log as a multiplier, and vice versa. But remember, these rules only apply if the bases are the same. For example, because the bases are not the same in loga, u, plus log, v, this expression can't be simplified. What is a ring? A ring is an algebraic structure, some definitions say a set, in which two binary operators addition and multiplication, in various combinations must satisfy either the additive associative, commutative, identity, and inverse properties. The multiplicative associative property, or the left and right distributivity properties. For example, the elements of one operation, such as addition, must form a group that is commutative, also known as an abelian group. The multiplicative operation must produce unique answers that have the associative property. These two operations are further connected by requiring the multiplication. To have a distributive property with respect to the addition. This can be written as follows, with A, B, and C elements of the ring. AX, B plus C, equals, AX B, plus, AX C, and, B plus C, X A equals, B X A, plus, C X A. What is the identity matrix? The identity matrix is the n by n matrix that has all ones down the main diagonal and zeros everywhere else, it must also be a square.
What is a subset and proper subset in set theory? Simply put, a subset is a portion of a set. If set B is a subset of set A, then all elements of set B are also elements in set A. If A and B are equal, then both sets are subsets of themselves. The empty set is also considered a subset of every other set. A proper subset is a subset other than the set itself. Who invented matrices? Although a simple form of matrices may have been used by the Mayans, and maybe other cultures. See below, the true mathematical use of a matrix was first formulated. Around 1850 by English mathematician, poet, and musician James Sylvester, 1814-1897. In his 1850 paper, Sylvester wrote, For this purpose we must commence, not with a square but with an oblong arrangement of terms consisting, suppose, of M lines and N columns. This will not in itself represent a determinant, but is, as it were, a matrix out of which we may form various systems of determinants by fixing upon a number P, and selecting at will P lines and P columns, the squares corresponding of PTH order. In this case, Sylvester used the term matrix to describe its conventional use. Or the place from which something else originates. But the matrix story was not all about Sylvester. In 1845 Sylvester's collaborator, English mathematician Arthur Cayley, 1821-1895, used a form of matrices in his work on the theory of linear transformations. By 1855 and 1858, Cayley began to use the term matrix in its modern mathematical sense. Although he was an avid mountaineer and a lawyer for close to a decade and a half. Which is how he met Sylvester, during his free time Cayley published more than 200 mathematical papers. He also contributed a great deal to the field of algebra, initiated analytic geometry of n-dimensional spaces, and developed the theory of invariance, among other mathematical feats. Sylvester also remained brilliant throughout his life. He founded the American Journal of Mathematics in 1878, and at the ripe age of 71, he invented the theory of reciproc ants, differential invariance. What early mathematicians are thought to be responsible? for originating the use of algebraic methods and ideas. To some scholars, Greek, Hellenic, mathematician Diophantus, c. 210 c. 290, is considered the father of algebra, as he developed his own algebraic notation. His words were noted and preserved by the Arabs. The translation of his words into Latin in the 16th century led to many algebraic advances. In more modern times, French mathematician François Vide 
1540-1603, also known by the Latin name Franciscus Vita, is often credited as the founder of modern algebra. For more information about Diophantus and Vite, see below and History of Mathematics. What are some examples of matrices? The dimensions of a matrix are the number of rows, horizontal numbers, and columns, vertical numbers, it is written as the rows first, column second. What is a matrix? A matrix is a concise way of representing and working with linear transformations, also. It is a rectangular array or grid of numbers or variables that allows the user to perform certain mathematical operations. They are usually symbolized as large parentheses or two large pair of parallel double lines surrounding the array of numbers or variables. These numbers can be manipulated to solve systems of equations or problems with many different variables or numbers by addition, subtraction, multiplication, or other methods. Each row and column of a given matrix must have the same number of elements. Any time one has a list of numbers, or a table of numbers in a specific order. Concerning anything at all, prices, grades, populations, coordinates of points. Production tables, it can be considered to be a matrix. When the idea of the matrix was first conceived, its development dealt with transformation of geometric objects and solution of systems of linear equations. Historically, the early emphasis was on the determinant, see below, not the matrix. Today, especially in linear algebra, matrices are considered first. What is a polynomial? In its simplest form, a polynomial is a mathematical equation that involves a sum of powers in one or more variable, all of which is multiplied by coefficients. In such equations, variables, and numbers on both sides of the equal sign are considered polynomials. For example, by expanding out the expression, x2, 3, or multiplying out the equation. We discover that, x2, 3 equals x3, 6, x2 plus 12, x8, which is a polynomial equation. What is an algebraic structure? An algebraic structure is made up of a set, collection of objects called elements, for more information about sets. See Foundations of Mathematics, together with one or more operations on the set. That satisfy certain axioms. The algebraic structures get their names depending on the operations and axioms. For example, Algebraic structures include fields, groups, and rings. 
as well as many other structures with strange names such as loops, monoids, groupoids, semi-groups, and quasi-groups. What does it mean if a set is countable? If a set is countable, or denumerable, it means that it is finite. This also means that the set's members can be matched in a one-to-one -one correspondence in which each element in one set is matched exactly with one element in the second and vice versa with all the natural numbers, or with a subset of the natural numbers. Mathematicians often say, A and B are in one-to-one -one correspondence, or A and B are bijective. For more about one-to-one -one correspondence, see Math Basics. In set theory, all finite sets are considered to be countable. As are all subsets of the natural numbers and integers. But sets such as real numbers, points on a line, and complex numbers are not countable. Is it possible to simplify logarithms? Yes, as in algebraic equations, it is possible to simplify logarithms, but in different ways. The following lists some examples, to simplify log 3, x, plus log 3, y, equals log 3, x, y. To simplify log 3, 6, log 3, 4, equals log 3, 6 fourths, to simplify 2 log, x, equals log, x2. How do you expand logarithms? Like an algebraic expression, it is possible to expand logarithms. Which is a way of picking apart an expression. The following lists two examples of expanding a logarithmic expression. To expand log 2, 3x, equals log 2, 3, plus log 2, x, to expand log 2, 12 slash x, equals log 2, 12, log 2, x. Why are mathematicians so interested in transcendental numbers? Transcendental numbers are those that are not the root of any integer polynomial. Or that are not an algebraic number of any degree. Thus, all transcendental numbers are irrational, rational numbers are algebraic numbers of degree 1. The importance of such numbers translates through more than two millennia of history. For example, they provided the first proof that circle squaring was insoluble. Which is one of the geometric problems that has baffled mathematicians throughout antiquity. Rings are usually named after one or more of their investigators. But such a practice usually makes understanding the properties of the various Associated rings difficult for anyone other than the mathematician working on the ring.
Why are mathematicians so interested in transcendental numbers? Transcendental numbers are those that are not the root of any integer polynomial. Or that are not an algebraic number of any degree. Thus, all transcendental numbers are irrational, rational numbers are algebraic numbers of degree 1. The importance of such numbers translates through more than two millennia of history. For example, they provided the first proof that circle squaring was insoluble. Which is one of the geometric problems that has baffled mathematicians throughout antiquity. Rings are usually named after one or more of their investigators. But such a practice usually makes understanding the properties of the various associated rings difficult for anyone other than the mathematician working on the ring. What is linear algebra? Linear algebra is the study of linear sets of equations. It encompasses their transformation properties and includes the analysis of rotations in space. Least squares fitting, and numerous other problems in mathematics, physics, and engineering. What is linear algebra? Linear algebra is the study of linear sets of equations. It encompasses their transformation properties and includes the analysis of rotations in space. Least squares fitting, and numerous other problems in mathematics, physics, and engineering. What is Boolean algebra? Boolean algebra is an abstract mathematical system used to express the relationship between sets, groups of objects or concepts. It is important in the study of information theory, the theory of probability, and the geometry of sets. The use of Boolean notation in electrical networks aided the development of switching theory and the eventual design of computers. It was English mathematician George Boole, 1815 to 1864, who first developed this type of logic by demonstrating the algebraic manipulation of logical statements, showing whether or not a statement is true. And showing how a statement can be made into a simpler, more convenient form without changing its overall meaning. Today, this way of looking at logic is called Boolean algebra. For more information about Bool, see History of Mathematics. Boolean algebra did not end there, in 1881 the English logician and mathematician John Venn 1834-1923, interpreted Boole's work and introduced a new way of diagramming Boole's notation in his treatise Symbolic Logic. This was later refined by the English mathematician Charles Dodgson, 1832-1898. Who was better known as the writer of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, under the pseudonym Lewis Carroll. Today, when studying sets, 
we call this method not the bool. Carroll, or Dodgson diagram, but the Venn diagram. Thus, Boolean notation demonstrates the relationship between groups. Indicating what is in each set alone, what is jointly contained in both, and what is present in neither. Geometry is the study of figures or objects in space of a certain number of dimensions. And types and focuses on the properties and measurements of points, lines, angles. Surfaces, and solids of those objects, or sometimes even the space around them. The word geometry is from the Greek words for earth and to measure. Geometria, broken down into GE and Metrian, respectively. A person who studies geometry is called a geometer or geometrician. What is Boolean algebra? Boolean algebra is an abstract mathematical system used to express the relationship between sets, groups of objects or concepts. It is important in the study of information theory, the theory of probability, and the geometry of sets. The use of Boolean notation in electrical networks aided the development of switching theory and the eventual design of computers. It was English mathematician George Boole, 1815 to 1864, who first developed this type of logic by demonstrating the algebraic manipulation of logical statements, showing whether or not a statement is true. And showing how a statement can be made into a simpler, more convenient form without changing its overall meaning. Today, this way of looking at logic is called Boolean algebra. For more information about Bool, see History of Mathematics. Boolean algebra did not end there, in 1881 the English logician and mathematician John Venn 1834-1923, interpreted Boole's work and introduced a new way of diagramming Boole's notation in his treatise Symbolic Logic. This was later refined by the English mathematician Charles Dodgson, 1832-1898, who was better known as the writer of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, under the pseudonym Lewis Carroll. Today, when studying sets, we call this method not the Boole. Carroll, or Dodgson diagram, but the Venn diagram. Thus, Boolean notation demonstrates the relationship between groups. Indicating what is in each set alone, what is jointly contained in both, and what is present in neither. Geometry is the study of figures or objects in space of a certain number of dimensions. And types and focuses on the properties and measurements of points, lines, angles. Surfaces, and solids of those objects, or sometimes even the space around them. The word geometry is from the Greek words for earth and to measure. Geometria, broken down into GE and Metrian, respectively. A person who studies geometry is called a geometer or geometrician. What are the divisions found within the field of geometry?
the geometry field has several distinct divisions, including Plane geometry This includes common features such as circles, lines, triangles, and polygons. Solid geometry This also includes such figures as circles and lines, as well as polyhedrons. Spherical geometry This includes shapes such as spherical triangles, see below, and polygons. Analytic geometry also called coordinate geometry. This includes the study of figures in terms of their positions, configurations, and separations. There are other types of geometry, too, including projective geometry and non-Euclidean geometry. Most of these are more complex forms of geometry that each have their own special reasons for use. What are the divisions found within the field of geometry? The geometry field has several distinct divisions, including Plane geometry This includes common features such as circles, lines, triangles, and polygons. Solid geometry This also includes such figures as circles and lines, as well as polyhedrons. Spherical geometry This includes shapes such as spherical triangles, see below, and polygons. Analytic geometry also called coordinate geometry. This includes the study of figures in terms of their positions, configurations, and separations. There are other types of geometry, too, including projective geometry and non-Euclidean geometry. Most of these are more complex forms of geometry that each have their own special reasons for use. When did geometry originate? The field of geometry was probably developed by several cultures over millennia. But only in crude, elementary forms. Some of the first to actually work with geometry were The cultures of the Mesopotamian region around 3500 BCE, especially the Babylonians. They were the earliest peoples to know about what is now called the Pythagorean Theorem. In fact, the Greek mathematician and philosopher Pythagoras of Samos c. 582 c. 507 BCE may have actually learned about this theorem in his travels to the east. And they possessed all the theorems of plane geometry that the Greeks attributed to Thales. The Egyptians came next, using geometric methods mainly for construction of huge monuments. This included the sundry pyramids and monuments of the region. Some of which still dot the landscape today a tribute to their builders who used geometric techniques. When did geometry originate? The field of geometry was probably developed by several cultures over millennia. But only in crude, elementary forms. Some of the first to actually work with geometry were the cultures of the Mesopotamian region around 3500 BCE, especially the Babylonians. They were the earliest peoples to know about what is now called the Pythagorean Theorem. 
In fact, the Greek mathematician and philosopher Pythagoras of Samos c 582 c. 507 BCE may have actually learned about this theorem in his travels to the east. And they possessed all the theorems of plane geometry that the Greeks attributed to Thales. The Egyptians came next, using geometric methods mainly for construction of huge monuments. This included the sundry pyramids and monuments of the region. Some of which still dot the landscape today a tribute to their builders who used geometric techniques. Were the Greeks involved in geometry? The Greeks were known to have extensive knowledge of geometry, producing many great geometers. With this and other contributions in mathematics, the Greeks profoundly changed the approach and character of the entire mathematical field. It is thought that Thales of Miletus, c. 625 c. 550 BCE, Ionian, first introduced geometry to the Greeks. As a merchant traveler, he was exposed to the Babylonian concept of measurement, from which practices sprang geometry. Thales used his geometric knowledge to solve problems such as the height of the pyramids and the distance of ships from the shoreline. Greek geometer Hippocrates of Chios, 470-410 BCE, was one of the first to present an axiomatic approach to geometry. As well as the first to work on the elements almost a century before Euclid, see below. Hippocrates may have worked on geometry and such problems as squaring the circle. But he lacked common sense and was duped by many people. Zeno of Elia, C490 C425 BCE, raised questions about lines, points, and numbers, all part of geometry, with his many paradoxes. For more information about Zeno and his paradoxes, see Foundations of Mathematics. Another important figure is Eudacus of Nidus, 408 to 355 BCE, who worked on geometric proportions and theories for determining areas and volumes. Others followed these geometers, including Archimedes, c. 287 to 212 BCE, Hellenic who worked on mechanics and took the first steps toward integral calculus. Apollonius of Perga, 262-190 BCE, or the Great Geometer, first named and presented theories on conic sections in his book Conics. And he introduced the terms parabola, ellipse, and hyperbola. There was also Papus of Alexandria, 290 to 350, who presented the basis for modern projective geometry, the geometry that deals with incidences, or whether elements such as lines, planes, and points coincide or not. Were the Greeks involved in geometry? The Greeks were known to have extensive knowledge of geometry, producing many great geometers. With this and other contributions in mathematics, the Greeks profoundly changed the approach and character of the entire mathematical field. 
it is thought that Thales of Miletus, c625 c550 BCE, Ionian, first introduced geometry to the Greeks. As a merchant traveler, he was exposed to the Babylonian concept of measurement. From which practices sprang geometry? Thales used his geometric knowledge to solve problems such as the height of the pyramids and the distance of ships from the shoreline. Greek geometer Hippocrates of Chios, 470 to 410 BCE, was one of the first to present an axiomatic approach to geometry. As well as the first to work on the elements almost a century before Euclid, see below. Hippocrates may have worked on geometry and such problems as squaring the circle. But he lacked common sense and was duped by many people. Zeno of Elia, c490 c425 BCE. Raised questions about lines, points, and numbers all part of geometry with his many paradoxes. For more information about Zeno and his paradoxes, see Foundations of Mathematics. Another important figure is Eudacus of Nidus, 408 to 355 BCE, who worked on geometric proportions and theories for determining areas and volumes. Others followed these geometers, including Archimedes, c. 287 to 212 BCE, Hellenic, who worked on mechanics and took the first steps toward integral calculus. Apollonius of Perga, 262 to 190 BCE, or the great geometer, first named and presented theories on conic sections in his book Conics. And he introduced the terms parabola, ellipse, and hyperbola. There was also Pupus of Alexandria, 290 to 350, who presented the basis for modern projective geometry, the geometry that deals with incidences. Or whether elements such as lines, planes, and points coincide or not. What are the five postulates of Euclid? Euclid was also famous for his postulates, propositions, statements that are true without proof and deal with specific subject matter, such as the proper ties of geometric objects. For more information about postulates, see Foundations of Mathematics. Along with definitions, Euclid began his text elements with five postulates. These postulates are as follows, some of which may seem obvious to us now. But in Euclid's time they had yet to be formally recorded it is possible to draw a straight line from any point to another point. It is possible to produce a finite straight line continuously in a straight line. It is possible to describe a circle with any center and radius. All right angles are equal to one another. Given any straight line and a point not on it, there exists one and only one straight line which passes through that point and never intersects the first line no matter how far the lines are extended. Another way to say this is, one and only one line can be drawn through a point parallel to a given line. This is also called the parallel postulate. 
mathematicians first believed this last postulate could be derived from the first four. But they now consider it to be independent of the others. In fact, this postulate leads to Euclidean geometry, and eventually to many non-Euclidean geometries that are made possible by changing the assumption of this fifth postulate. Like many early attempts at explaining mathematics, not all these postulates tell the entire geometric story. There were still a large number of gaps, many of which were gradually filled in over time. What are the five postulates of Euclid? Euclid was also famous for his postulates, propositions, statements that are true without proof and deal with specific subject matter, such as the proper ties of geometric objects. For more information about postulates, see Foundations of Mathematics. Along with definitions, Euclid began his text elements with five postulates. These postulates are as follows, some of which may seem obvious to us now. But in Euclid's time they had yet to be formally recorded it is possible to draw a straight line from any point to another point. It is possible to produce a finite straight line continuously in a straight line. It is possible to describe a circle with any center and radius. All right angles are equal to one another. Given any straight line and a point not on it, there exists one and only one straight line which passes through that point and never intersects the first line, no matter how far the lines are extended. Another way to say this is, one and only one line can be drawn through a point parallel to a given line. This is also called the parallel postulate. Mathematicians first believed this last postulate could be derived from the first four. But they now consider it to be independent of the others. In fact, this postulate leads to Euclidean geometry, and eventually to many non-Euclidean geometries that are made possible by changing the assumption of this fifth postulate. Like many early attempts at explaining mathematics, not all these postulates tell the entire geometric story. There were still a large number of gaps, many of which were gradually filled in over time. What Greek mathematician wrote the book Elements? The Greek mathematician and geometrician Euclid, c. 325 c. 270 BCE, made some of the most significant improvements to geometry in his time. For more about Euclid, see History of Mathematics and Foundations of Mathematics. One contribution was his collection of 13 books on geometry and other mathematics. Titled Elements, or Stoichion in Greek. This work has been called the world's most definitive text on geometry. The first six books offer elementary plane geometry, with sections on triangles, rectangles, circles, polygons, proportions, and similarities. The rest of the books present other mathematics of his day. 
including the theory of numbers, books 7 to 10, solid geometry, pyramids, and platonic solids. These books were used for centuries in Western Europe, in fact. The elementary geometry many students learn in high school today is still largely based on Euclid's ideas on the subject. What Greek mathematician wrote the book Elements? The Greek mathematician and geometrician Euclid, c. 325 c. 270 BCE, made some of the most significant improvements to geometry in his time. For more about Euclid, see History of Mathematics and Foundations of Mathematics. One contribution was his collection of 13 books on geometry and other mathematics. Titled Elements, or Stoichion in Greek. This work has been called the world's most definitive text on geometry. The first six books offer elementary plane geometry, with sections on triangles, rectangles, circles, polygons, proportions, and similarities. The rest of the books present other mathematics of his day, including the theory of numbers, books 7 to 10, solid geometry, pyramids, and platonic solids. These books were used for centuries in Western Europe, in fact. The elementary geometry many students learn in high school today is still largely based on Euclid's ideas on the subject. What is Euclidean geometry? Euclidean geometry is named after Euclid, the famous Greek mathematician. It is geometry mostly based on Euclid's fifth postulate. The parallel postulate and is sometimes called parabolic geometry. Plane geometry is described as two-dimensional Euclidean geometry. While three dimensional Euclidean geometry is known as solid geometry. What is Euclidean geometry? Euclidean geometry is named after Euclid the famous Greek mathematician. It is geometry mostly based on Euclid's fifth postulate. The parallel postulate and is sometimes called parabolic geometry. Plane geometry is described as two-dimensional Euclidean geometry. While three-dimensional Euclidean geometry is known as solid geometry. What was François Witt's contribution to geometry? French mathematician François Witt, or Franciscus Vita, in Latin, 1540-1603. Although thought of as the founder of modern algebra, also introduced a connection between algebra, geometry, and trigonometry. He also included trigonometric tables in his Canon Mathematicus. 1571, along with the theory behind their construction. For more about Vite, 
see History of Mathematics and Algebra. What was Franz Wavit's contribution to geometry? French mathematician François Vite, or Franciscus Vita, in Latin, 1540-1603. Although thought of as the founder of modern algebra, also introduced a connection between algebra, geometry, and trigonometry. He also included trigonometric tables in his canon Mathematicus. 1571 along with the theory behind their construction. For more about Vite, see History of Mathematics and Algebra. What was Gaspard Monge's connection to geometry? French mathematician, physicist, and public official Gaspard Monge. Also known as Comte de Pelles, 1746 to 1818, was the first to lay down ideas about modern descriptive geometry. A field that is essential to mechanical and architectural drawing. He is also called the founder of differential geometry. As one of the founders of the Akal Polytechnique. He served as professor of descriptive geometry, and around 1800 published the first textbook. On the subject based on his lectures, aptly called Geometry Descriptive. Today, the system once called Geometry Descriptive is now known as Orthographic Projection. A graphical method used in modern mechanical drawing. What was Gaspard Monge's connection to geometry? French mathematician, physicist, and public official Gaspard Monge. Also known as Comte de Pelles, 1746 to 1818, was the first to lay down ideas about modern descriptive geometry. A field that is essential to mechanical and architectural drawing. He is also called the founder of differential geometry. As one of the founders of the Akal Polytechnique. He served as professor of descriptive geometry, and around 1800 published the first textbook. On the subject based on his lectures, aptly called Geometry Descriptive. Today, the system once called Geometry Descriptive is now known as Orthographic Projection. A graphical method used in modern mechanical drawing. What is a mathematical space? Outer space may be the final frontier to some people. But back on Earth there are also numerous types of space in mathematics. For the most part, mathematical space consists of points, sets, or vectors. Each space and the members of that space obey certain mathematical properties. Most spaces are named after their principal investigator, including Euclidean and Minkowski space. 
One of the most general types of mathematical spaces is called the topological space. What is a mathematical space? Outer space may be the final frontier to some people. But back on Earth there are also numerous types of space in mathematics. For the most part, mathematical space consists of points, sets, or vectors. Each space and the members of that space obey certain mathematical properties. Most spaces are named after their principal investigator, including Euclidean and Minkowski space. One of the most general types of mathematical spaces is called the topological space. How do you find the roots of a polynomial? Finding the root, also called a zero, of a polynomial is one way to solve for the equation. In other words, the root of an equation is simply a number, or numbers, that solves the equation. For example, for second degree polynomials we can find the roots by completing the square. Picking apart an equation is the best way to see this. 1 3 x 2 4 x plus 1 equals 0 2. 1 3rd, 3 x 2 4 x plus 1, equals. 1 3rd, 0, making the coefficient of the x 2 term into a 1, 3. x 2, 4 thirds, x plus 1 third equals 0 4. x 2, 4 thirds, x. plus 1 third equals 0. Group the x and x2 terms together, 5. x2, 4 thirds, x plus, minus 2 thirds, 2, minus 2 thirds, 2 plus 1 third equals 0, determine the coefficient of the x term. Divide it by 2 and then square, add and subtract that term, 6. x2 thirds, 2 four ninths plus 1 third equals 0, x 2 thirds, 2 1 ninth equals 0, add together the 4 ninths plus 1 third by converting the denominator to 9, in which 1 third becomes 3 ninths. x 2 thirds, 2 equals 1 ninth, move the 1 ninth to the other side of the equation by subtracting it from both sides. 9 x 2 thirds equals 1 third or x 2 thirds equals minus 1 third that means that x equals 1 or x equals 1 third are the two roots that make the equation true. Just substitute either number into the initial equation to see that they are both true. They are listed as follows and indicates natural numbers or integers x represents real numbers. z stands for complex numbers what are some other terms used in dealing with algebraic equations? There are many terms in algebra, including those dealing with equations. The following lists some of the more common ones. Equality and inequality and equality is a mathematical statement that shows the equivalence of two quantities. For example, if A is equal to B, it is written as the equality A equals B. An inequality is just the opposite, A does not equal B, or A asterisk B. Formula A formula is a rule, fact, or principle expressed in terms of mathematical symbols. 
including equations, equalities, identities, or inequalities. Note, the plural of formula in Latin is formulae, but it has become more readily accepted as formulas. Identity and identity is a mathematical relationship equating one quantity to another that initially may appear to differ, it also means an equation that is always true. Such as the Pythagorean theorem, for more about identities, see below. What are the five postulates of Euclid? Euclid was also famous for his postulates, propositions, statements that are true without proof and deal with specific subject matter, such as the proper ties of geometric objects. For more information about postulates, see Foundations of Mathematics. Along with definitions, Euclid began his text elements with five postulates. These postulates are as follows, some of which may seem obvious to us now. But in Euclid's time they had yet to be formally recorded it is possible to draw a straight line from any point to another point. It is possible to produce a finite straight line continuously in a straight line. It is possible to describe a circle with any center and radius. All right angles are equal to one another. Given any straight line and a point not on it, there exists one and only one straight line which passes through that point and never intersects the first line no matter how far the lines are extended. Another way to say this is, one and only one line can be drawn through a point parallel to a given line. This is also called the parallel postulate. Mathematicians first believed this last postulate could be derived from the first four. But they now consider it to be independent of the others. In fact, this postulate leads to Euclidean geometry, and eventually to many non-Euclidean geometries that are made possible by changing the assumption of this fifth postulate. Like many early attempts at explaining mathematics, not all these postulates tell the entire geometric story. There were still a large number of gaps, many of which were gradually filled in over time. How did symbols for unknowns and knowns in algebraic equations develop? In 1591, François Vite was the first to write and solve general algebraic equations by introducing the systematic use of letters as algebraic symbols. He used vowels, A, E, I, O, U, for the unknowns and consonants. The rest of the alphabet, for the coefficients, or knowns. But it was Rene Descartes who introduced a new way of using letters in the alphabet in his work La Geometry. He used the letters at the end of the alphabet, X, Y, for unknowns and the beginning of the alphabet. A, B, for knowns, in many instances, these letters are italicized. This standard is still used in algebra today.
What are equations? In its simplest form, an equation is represented by expressions written with an equal sign in between. The two entities on either side are equal to each other. They are among the simplest mathematical problems most people deal with. Most people have solved equations in their daily lives without realizing it. For example, when students first learn addition in school. They typically work on equations such as, plus 5 equals 7, in which the blank needs to be filled. This problem could also be expressed as x plus 5 equals 7, a simple equation. In this case, the equation is solved when x equals 2. The following are also equations. 6 equals 6 x equals 8 y plus 8 equals 14 x 4 equals 15 x 5 x y equals 8 x y 2 plus 4 There are also some fundamental properties of equations that are good to know. They include symmetric properties, if A equals B, then B equals A, substitution, if A equals B. Then A may be replaced by B, addition, if A equals B, and C is a number. Then A plus C equals B plus C, and multiplication, if A equals B, and C is a number, then A x C equals B x C. What is the discriminant of a quadratic equation? In the quadratic equation ax2 plus bx plus c equals 0, the value of b2 for ac is the discriminant. The same numbers and letters that are under the square root sign of the quadratic formula. This is actually the products of the squares of the polynomial root differences. In other words, this quantity characterizes certain properties of the quantity's roots. The discriminate is often used for such mathematical concepts as metrics. Modules, quadratic fields, and polynomials. What is a perfect square? Here are many equations that can be factored into a perfect square. Any expression written in the form x2 plus 2x and a 2 is a perfect square an expression writ 210 as something. To determine if an expression is a perfect square, first see if the constant term is a square number in other words. Can the square root of the number be taken to get an integer for an answer? If so, determine if the square root of the constant multiplied by 2 gives the coefficient of the linear term, or the x term. If it does, the original expression may be factored into a perfect square. Note, the above procedure only works when the coefficient of x2 is 1. For example, in the equation x2 plus 8x plus 16, the constant term, 16, is already a perfect square, the square root of 16 is 4. Since 2, 4, equals 8, the original expression can be written as a perfect square. Because we know x2 plus 2x and a 2 is a perfect square, and equals, x and a 2, 
by substituting the common factor 4 into the equation, we find that x2 plus 8x plus 16 equals x plus 4, 2.